Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here, and as we get ready to approach upon Thanksgiving, we continue with our yearly tradition here at this channel to unveil for you one of the giant base type transformers. This year it's the 1987 Decepticon Headmaster Commander, Scorponok. Now, Scorponok would be released in 1987. He would also be available briefly in 1988. He would be discontinued during that year, and we would not get a replacement for him. <clears throat> Scorponok would also be the last base-type character released for the Decepticons, as his Autobot counterpart, Fortress Maximus, was also the same for the Autobots. <clears throat> But of course, as you can see, Scorponok also is not nearly as big as Fortress Maximus, standing at just barely over a foot tall. But he still looks pretty mighty imposing from this view. Now, interestingly enough, in Japan, Scorponok was called Zarak which is, of course, the name given to the Headmaster figure here in the American series. And uh, following the retirement of the original toy, they would reissue the figure in a, in a predominantly black color. And, of course, it would be released as Black Zarek. Black Zarek, of course, would not make any appearances in American media, but was prominent featured as the villain in the anime series Super God Master Force. Whereas Zarek, or Scorponok, would be one of the main villains in the previous series, the Headmasters. Then, of course, down here is Scorponok's aid. This is Fast Track. And we'll cover Fast Track a little later in the video. <clears throat> now, before we go too far into this, I do want to point out that Scorponok is something of a fragile toy. Not quite to the extreme that his previous year counterpart Trypticon was, as Trypticon was a motorized toy. But Scorponok does have a fair amount of points on his body that do stress wear very easily as do a few of his parts. In fact, a lot of Scorponok's parts are very difficult to find in mint condition. Or even just to find at all. I ought to know, because personally, I went through four of these guys. Four! To get one complete. This, of course, the body, is. this one is number three. Number four's wasn't in the best of shape. That leads me to something that I want to point out as a fragile point. And it's this area right here. Right here at the back of the leg where the ramps connect. This area is a very thin plastic, as you can see here from the side view. This is very thin plastic. It does stress wear. So it's kind of, if that's something that means something to you out there, viewers... You do want to check that on loose Scorponox. That was one of the problems with number four. That's why I've kept the body from number three and just salvaged what I needed. At any rate, let's look at Scorponox articulation, and he does have quite a bit of articulation. As you can see here, we can raise his arm out to the side. His arms do rotate at the shoulders. Not quite all the way due to the fact that the scorpion legs get in the way, but if you stretch the arm outward, it will rotate all the way. Plus, there is a joint at his hip, so he can spread his legs apart about so far in this configuration. They can be rotated as well, so he can kick forward like that. <coughs> Of 
Plus, of course, is an added feature. His claws do open about that far. So, for a guy as big as what Scorponok is, he is quite well articulated. Before we go about transforming Scorponok, let's take a look at Fast Track real quick. This is, of course, the little mini robot that's included. Unfortunately, since he had, there is no stickers for Fast Track. I'll even show that to you on the instructions when we get to that point, but there is no stickers for him. And that's kind of a shame, because... Otherwise, he just looks plain. I mean, i got to get him up close so you can see that he does have some detail, but he's just so plain. I mean, even a Decepticon symbol would have been nice. Fast Track, though, is pretty well articulated. You can rotate his arms at the shoulders. They do rotate all the way if you don't have the gun in his hand. But, of course, his arms also do come off. He does have a joint at his hips, so you can bend him at the hip. And there is one at his knees, but it's more to bend that way. And then, of course, there is an ankle one as well, but again, that's more to transform him. So, speaking of transforming him, let's get him into his alternate mode. To do that, all we got to do is raise his arms up. Fold down his feet. And then fold him up and over. Onto the body. <clears throat> and he becomes a tank. The instructions label him as an attack tank. But since he does not have treads. By technicality he's not really a tank. He's more an armored car. Instead. How does he roll on these little six wheels? Very, very excellent on this smooth piece of poster board. Yeah, we're at the big table, so we got to make sure it stays looking nice. So, poster board has to go on the, the table. But, he does roll on it pretty good. So, at least, while he's plain looking, at least he does play well. Alrighty, now we're going to transform Scorponok into his city mode. To do that, we need to remove a fair number of his pieces. Start by removing his gun. Also need to remove the dual cannons. He has four total on his shoulders. Also need to remove the shield. And lastly, <clears throat> we need to take his head. For that, we just fold back the helmet and pull the head on out. Of course, we'll bring it up here, transform it for you. We'll start by folding down this piece. There it goes. Fold this down over the face. Then stand it up. And here you have Lord Zarak. Leader of the evil Nebulons. And like other headmaster figures of this scale. You can bring his arm out straight. Or you can move it straight up. Kind of like to do a nice surrender pose. He's got a joint at the hip that allows you to bend the legs like so. And there's a joint at the knees, so you can bend the knees like so. Alright, enough bending Zarek. We'll put him aside. 
Of course, if you hadn't looked already, there's where the tech spec thing is, but for the moment, we need it closed. <clears throat> Start by swinging these up at the shoulders and straighten them out like so. Straighten out the claws like that. Almost looks like a zombie coming for us, doesn't it? And now we're going to turn him around. You fold out the individual legs. Of course, you'd also disengage the tail if it connected in. At his back, this one doesn't like to connect in very well, so we'll just pull it loose and lay it on down for the moment. Now, at this point, scooting back a bit so we adjust the camera, they want you to remove the leg guards. Of course, if chrome wear is a big thing for you, you got to do it real carefully. I find the best way just a gentle squeeze from the sides, and they'll slide right off. Now we get to have him do a split like this. We fold in. Youch! Fold in the feet. You just crushed my other thumb. While we're at it, we also need to rotate the legs. Come on, Scorpy. Cooperate. Like so. You didn't like to do this, but let me check this out real quick. All right, there's where we're going wrong. We gotta get one more, one more twist like that. Weave the tail on through like so. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Now, of course, we can fold down the ramps at both sides. See? Now we get the ramps. Get the ramps are down. <clears throat> Don't go too far on me, camera. We also want to fold out these repair bays, the gray areas that were on his legs. Get those folded out. For his tail here, we need to rotate this gray piece so it kind of goes underneath like so. And then adjust it so it lines up level up in this area. And of course, we grab the chest plate, raise it up, and it should line up with the body like that. Now to add some accessories here, folks. The chrome pieces that we had from earlier, they just get connect right here onto his claws. The shield, we fold in half. It snaps together like so. And it forms a little tower that we just rest in. In this little gap back here. I think it goes in. Okay, it goes in better this way. With the label side facing backwards. I don't know why that is, but... 
Who am I to judge? Now, we take his gun. <clears throat> the gray piece is removable, so separate it. The gun has a post on this side, and it will attach to a hole way down here. Way down over here. Just attach it into this hole. Like that. Of course, turn him around to the other side. There's a similar hole over here. That's where this one is. That's where the gray piece connects. Like so. All right, over here. They suggest for this repair bay we put in the mechanical arms. So then over here at this other repair bay, we shall assemble. And then at that way, this away. And mount in the elevator. And then along the various holes that are dotting the landscape, we can attach the various radar dishes as we feel fit. And there we are, folks. Scorponok is in his defense base mode. Get the tripod out of the way. <clears throat> Rather impressive, but not to the degree that Trypticon a year earlier was. I mean, I like the repair bay section that we have here and the elevator over here. Those can be either side, but the fact that it tears up part of the road means that it's not a smooth transition to drive a guy down. But of course, like Trypticon, he does have a functional center ramp. A little black button back here, you push it, and that will... You slide it forward, and it boosts the ramp up. So we'll put Fast Track on it, and we'll launch him to the floor. Good catch. I mean, while it's nice to get another base to play with, it's just... looks a little cluttered to me, folks. I mean, what do you think? Sound off about it in the comments down below. One other thing I failed to mention, these little panels here on the sides of the legs, they can open up and... got access to little missiles in there. Non-firing, of course, so... Not much you can do but admire him. <clears throat> Alright, let's get ready and put Scorponok in his final mode. Of course, to do that, we need to start by closing these little missile panels. Take away all four of the satellite dishes. Remove the mechanical arms. And, of course, the gun piece from the back. Close this panel up. Over here to the other side. Remove the elevator. Of course, remove the gun. Close that end up, too. Remove the tower. And remove the chrome pieces. Like that. Now we can fold the ramps up. Like that.
And of course, we can rotate the legs around. No, I think they wanted them the other way. Yeah, let's at least put them like that. And reattach the chrome pieces. This way you can see what I'm doing. Be gentle with them. <clears throat> Hold up the chest piece so that, that clamps down like so. And of course, we got to separate this out and spread it as far back as we can take that. <clears throat> then we rotate his legs. So the ramps, the orange pieces here, will face us for the time being. Because then we're going to bring them up like so. And then they get folded back. Because we're going to bend them at the knee to fold them up. Now, <clears throat> these posts here at the end of the ramp piece are going to attach in here to these holes there to help form Scorpinox tail. Once you got that in there, fold this piece up and out. And then, of course, there's an orange tab to stick out for his pincher, or his stinger rather. Then we come up front here, fold down the arms, rotate them out a little bit. And then there we have it, the scorpion mode. But of course, for some added fun, we can bring the dual lasers back out again. Attach two of them here on his shoulders. And the other two can be connected to the ramps. And then for added fun, open up the chest plate. And Zarek can sit down in the big hole in there. And take it for a spin. You gotta get him all the way down so he doesn't run up against the button. But there we are now. Scorpionock is in his scorpion mode. He's also got wheels underneath him that allows him to walk, that allows him to be rolled along the floor. But take notice here of the legs. Watch the little scorpion legs. You can see a fair amount of them do move. The front ones don't move very well. Let me adjust the arms and see if that helps move them a little bit. Not overly. But it is a nice little play feature. <clears throat> and this is, of course, is the mode Scorpionok is most well remembered for. As Michael Bay did use it in the Transformers movie. But of course, Scorpionok was basically the size of a small scorpion to us in Transformer mode. But of course, to be a small scorpion as a Transformer meant he was a gargantuan one to us humans. And they just basically treated Scorpionok like he was nothing more than a dumb animal. Whereas in the G1 media, the proper media, or at least we'll say proper in the case of comparing it to Michael Bay's movies, Scorpionok is actually a quite intelligent and very fearful leader. Now, both in the Headmaster series and the Master Force series, 
Scorponok in the Scorpion mode was also capable of space flight. Yeah. Try to explain that one, folks. Take a look here, my friends, at all of the loose parts for Scorponok. And you'll start to get something of an impression as to why it took me four Scorponoks to get one complete. And that's not even with all the things totally disassembled. But you'll see that here in a moment. <clears throat> but let's go over all the parts. We'll start, of course, with his gun. This is Scorponok's gun. The instructions call this an anti-gravity gun. And of course, it doesn't have the usual hand grip. It just has a hole in the bottom. That's where it mounts to his claw. And of course, it has a scope on it, so that makes it kind of cool looking. Don't care for the fact that most of the other side is hollow, but a fair amount of that is hidden when the gun guard is attached to it, so I guess it's okay. Now, while it's not listed as being removable, it is quite commonly missing on loose Scorpinox, his helmet. <clears throat> the helmet just connects on with a couple of, it's got a couple of posts on the side, and it just rocks back and forth, but it comes off with no effort at all. So you'll definitely want to make sure that you've got it. Of course, we're also missing one particular piece to show off. Speaking of his head, I'm going to get out of there, damn it. <clears throat> we should not neglect Lord Zarek himself, the headmaster figure. Fold him over like that. There you go. We got the head. So we'll put the head in front of the helmet. We have two of these orange ramps. They're exactly the same, unlike the ramps from Trypticon. They are exactly the same. If one side's all flat and the arrow can point up or down, your choice, of course. And on the back, it's got this raised detail on here. And we have two of these chrome leg guards. This is the only side that you'll see. The other side is, of course, hollow and empty. As you can see on this sample, the chrome is beautiful. Very, very minor dings to it. But I can tell you underneath it, it's orange, like all the like most of the rest of the other parts. It is orange underneath it. Scorponok number three's original leg guards were mostly bare of chrome. So this is one of the few parts that I can proudly boast was taken from Scorponok 4. I took the leg guards. Mama didn't raise no fool. And of course here we got the tower slash shield. Because it does separate. With a little gentle persuasion when it's in tower mode. And then it can clamp together to be a shield. But I would avoid putting too much effort on that. This is another very fragile piece. These tabs here on the ends, they are very thin plastic. They do warp very easily. Both Scorponok 1 and 2 had ones that were stress worn. So naturally when I got this one I kept it, but I've always made a point when I've got it in the shield mode, I just let it hang to the side like that. 
doesn't really diminish it. It actually looks a little bit better resting against his arm like that. Kind of looks more like an arm guard than a shield. So it kind of works out better that way. Then, of course, this here is the gun guard. I.e., it's the piece that hides all the openness of his gun. Just connected by tabs and holes, so you just line it up, put it in. As you can see, it covers most of the hollowness on there. Yeah, it was kind of a dumb idea, but... Oh well, whatever works. <clears throat> we also got four of these, which they call his dual photon cannons. There are four. One, two, three, four. Let me see if I get one, two, three, four. They're all exactly the same. And of course, they're hollow on the back side. Now comes the tricky part. He has four radar dishes, but none of them are the same. It's part of what makes getting Scorponok a pain complete, because these are all different. Here's the first one. It looks like it's got a little TV screen in the middle of it there. Here's the second one, which almost bears a resemblance to the Rob robot from the old Nintendo system. And you got the third one here, which kind of looks like a little sword of sorts. Of course, the crossbars are off-center, but... And then you got number four. Which is basically a long stick. Moving along now, he has two mechanical arms. This is the first one. And it basically has a claw on the end of it. And the other side is hollow. And we have the second one. This is the hollow side. Turn it over and there's the full side. And it has a gun on it. It's probably a welding torch or some other repair tool. Yeah, and he's got just the two arms, but they're both different. And we got the elevator here, and as you saw earlier, the elevator does separate into two parts. We got the platform, and then you got the actual elevator mechanism. And then lastly, we come to his sidekick, Fast Track. As I told you earlier, Fast Track's arms do come off. Just like that. So as you can tell, you got a right arm and a left arm. But wait, there's more. The guns come off. They're both the same gun, but let's get one up close so you can see it. So, there you are, my friends. Quite a chore in unto itself just to get all the parts. Moving right along now, we'll take a look at Scorpinox instructions. Yes, he did come in scorpion mode, as I will show you in a moment. Can you imagine getting this bad boy on Christmas Day? 
How quickly do you think he'd be out of the box? Unless you were like my parents, and he would have already been out of the box before I got up. As was the case with many of my Transformers, they were already out of the box. Except for maybe Hunger. I don't think, I think that one I had to get out myself. Of course, I never had any of these real big guys as a kid. Always wanted them. <clears throat> but then again, if I had had them, half of them would have been missing. And I probably would have went through another four. And of course, you now we're seeing how that turned him into the robot. And then, of course, how to put on all those stickers. Of course, there they also add, get the robot points. And then on the last page, do the rub sign and the tech spec. But of course, before we get to that, as I said, I would show you how I knew he came in scorpion mode. Get fast track out of the way here. Take scorpion out of the way for a moment. That's because I got the styrofoam insert. Of course, up here you can put the shield and drop a lot of the little accessories in it. Right here and here you could put the dual cannons. This was for the ramps. That was where Lord Zarek is. This is where you'd put fast track. And down here is where the gun would go. That was one bonus for buying the fourth Scorponok. As you can probably guess, what's getting the foam insert without getting the box? Unfortunately, this box is not in the best of shape. But as you can also see by looking at the toy here on the box, it has some considerable differences to what came out with the final product. There's a fair amount more green on Scorponok, like the guns, the bit to his tail, even the helmet were all done in green. So this is obviously the prototype figure, and those were changed on the final product. So you got a nice, massive, imposing picture of Scorponok. Of course, fold down the top of the box, and you can see the robot mode in its prototype. So that's a very impressive and rare sight to see. This also doesn't look like the gun had the guard piece on it either, so that's a bit of a difference. Of course, you got this uh, this stuff on the side as well, and same thing on the bottom as what was on the top. Here's why the box isn't in the best of shape. The one side's all torn off. And, of course, the tech spec's been cut off, but I did get the tech spec with it, so we'll take a look at that in a moment. But you get a close-up of the mural from that year. It's beautiful. I think Hasbro should have made, done a big version of this as a jigsaw puzzle. I 
And of course over here you get an abridged version of how to transform from scorpion to robot to base. <clears throat> so, very interesting bit of lore there. That out of the way. Bring our star back. And his sidekick. So after all, where would our heroes be without their sidekicks? Now, to point out with the tech spec, there is a variation to the tech spec. And by a stroke of luck, I do have the variation. I will show it to you. But I'm also going to prove to you I do have the one from the box. Because here's the other part of it. Scorponok was worth five robot points. Grab something over the edge real quick. Let's off at the edge real quick so that I'm totally ready to go over this with ya. Alright. Let's take a look here. As you see, we got the picture here that was on the front of the box. It's done in purple to show he's a Decepticon. It gives his name as Scorponok, and his function is Headmaster Commander. His motto is Kindness is no virtue, and cruelty is no vice. Despair and isolation are all that remain in his wake. Believes the poor should be exploited, the weak oppressed, and the noble corrupted. Others' pain is his sole pleasure. In scorpion mode, tail shoots 100,000 volt electric bursts, has twin pulse blasters, claws can crush mountains. In defense base mode, has over-the-horizon radar, communications center, anti-aircraft sonic cannon, repair bay, construction bay, semi-autonomous armored interceptor with dual photon cannons that patrol the base perimeter. In robot mode, has fusion-powered anti-gravity gun, binary bonded to Lord Zarek, leader of the evil Nebulons. So, quite an interesting lineup for him. Now, we're going to take a look at the grid, and this is where the variation comes in, folks. Let's take a look at his stats. It lists his strength as 8, his intelligence is 7, his speed is 2, his endurance is 8, his rank is also 8, as is his courage, and his firepower and skill are 7. Now... I say this is a variation because this is the revised tech spec. The original had the same, had the, exactly the same text, but as you can see as I lay the decoder over it, he has vastly different numbers here. On his original, it lists that his strength is 3, his intelligence 4, speed of 9, Endurance and rank and courage are threes, and his firepower and skill are at fours. So, this makes him vastly weaker than what you would expect a Transformer of his caliber to be. And uh, just so you know, where, where do I get the source of the tech spec differences? It's in this book. Transformers Identification and Price Guide, written by Mark Bellomo. Of course, this book has seen a lot of wear in the years that I have had it. And it has been a godsend to doing this channel. And it was dumb luck that I got both of the specs. This one I had ordered separately online, and this one came with the box. So, talk about good luck. Especially for any of you out there that might actually want to seek both of them out. I wish you the best of luck on that. But, hey, it can happen. I got them. <clears throat> now we get down to my thoughts. What do I think of Scorponok? Scorponok is an interesting character made out a little bit more interesting by the more than meets the eye guides as the tech spec just left him as generically evil. And unfortunately, that was predominantly carried over in the cartoon. 
But unfortunately, the cartoon got canceled before they could really do anything with the larger headmasters in the form of Scorponok and Fortress Maximus. You really didn't know if the giant robots had any intelligence or sentience in them. They seemed to be guided more by what their headmasters wanted, not themselves. The more the meets the eye guides paint that Scorponok is a rather competent warrior and does project an image of fear to his subordinates, as would be expected of a Decepticon leader. He doesn't want any of the underlings to start thinking they can take him in a fight. But secretly, deep down inside of him, he does wish that the Autobot Decepticon conflict can end in a way that it benefits all the Transformers. He's still bonded to Lord Zarek, who is a political leader on Nebulon instead of being made out to be like he's the Emperor, like Emperor Palpatine of Star Wars. Zarek's also a political leader. He made the, the alliance with the Decepticons in the hopes of cementing his power. But as he's been bonded with Scorponok, it's also brought about these same feelings in him as well. As no being likes to think of themselves as being evil. So it's made him question a lot of his own motivations. And that's probably the biggest weakness of Scorponok is the fact that deep down they he doesn't really want to be involved in it and wishes that it could just be ended. Preferably in a way that it benefits the Transformers. <clears throat> So I kind of like that fleshing out that was done in the IDW comics. They made these powerful titan-like transformers somewhat resentful and not really willing participants in the conflict. Which is kind of an interesting twist on it as these guys can obviously take considerably more punishment than most of the other Transformers. So, if you got somebody that's this big and he's not that willing to fight, how do you motivate him to stay fighting? As a toy, though, Scorponok does fall a bit short when you compare him to Trypticon. And unfortunately, since they are the only two base characters for the Decepticons, Comparisons between the two are inevitable. And even though Trypticon loses out on a lot because he was a motorized toy, Scorponok loses out on a lot of it too due to the design choices that they went with. As you saw in the city mode, I mean, they have you placing the radar dishes along what would be the main road. And you even tear up sections of the main road to allow for a lot of the play features. I mean, yeah, he came out after the Combaticons and Stunticons would have been available. I mean, they would have still been on the shelves during Scorponok's first year out. So, why would they take that feature away? It just doesn't make a lot of sense. Play features seem more set up to play with the Headmaster figures, and well, that's cool and all that, but the Headmaster guys were considerably more expensive on the toy shelves than the carded figures that would have been used to make combiner components. And since Scorponok really doesn't have much to interact with them... It kind of comes off as a missed opportunity in my eyes. So unfortunately, that hurts Scorponok a lot. I'm going to put Scorponok, though, in the middle tier. He just barely falls short of being in the top tier. I mean, if it weren't for a lot of those design choices, he would have definitely been a top tier figure. 
but the more I think about it, the more he was obviously designed to play be played with the more expensive toys, and not every one of us as a child could easily get the more expensive toys. I mean, I myself, the small ones I could get very easily from my parents. The big ones I had to wait for, like, my birthday or the holidays before I would get them, and I wouldn't get a whole lot of them. Usually I'd get just the combiner component, and that'd be the end of it. So, that way I could at least build the giant robot, but it's like, okay, then I don't get any of the other cool figures. So it was kind of... This guy's a compromise to make work. And I do apologize to any Scorponok fans out there that love this toy. I can see why people would have, would love this toy. I mean, let's face it, for the Titans Return series, Hasbro had a poll as to which giant toy they wanted to be uh, have brought back. Omega Supreme, Trypticon, or Scorponok here. So it was nice to see he was on the list to be considered. Unfortunately, he lost to Trypticon. So, yeah, you can't win them all. But, as I said, Scorponok goes in the middle tier. And that concludes my review of the 1987 Decepticon Headmaster Commander, Scorponok. If you like the video, leave a thumbs up here on YouTube. Don't forget as well, hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't joined us already. And make sure to ring the bell so you'll be notified of all future videos. And also, please consider sharing your thoughts of Scorponok in the comments section down below. This is Sparkster1701, wishing all my American viewers to have a happy Thanksgiving here on Thursday. Don't wind up with too much of a turkey hangover, and I'll catch you all later.